possible. How are you, ma'am? Good. How about you? Wonderful. It's been a long time since we've talked. It has. Congratulations on your big promotion. Are well, you really building really, housing really, for the whole state? Yeah, it was really just a lateral, uh, mm -hmm. but it was uh, a new opportunity. So new opportunities are good. Always exciting. Give it a couple of minutes. I think we're waiting on, let's see, Janet, you there? I'm here and I'm recording. You got her recorded. Yes. I already hit recording. Awesome. Well, again, uh, I appreciate y'all joining us uh, this morning and it uh, looks like uh, there's uh, just uh, about seven or eight of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll be happy to field whatever questions or or I can get down a little bit more in the weeds on a topic. Uh, uh, we can do this rapid fire, however y'all prefer. We really don't have a format set up for these breakout rooms. So any uh, specific questions? Hey, Alan, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you doing? Uh, good. How are you? I, I'm, I actually work at the COG as well, but I had a quick question, and I'm not sure if okay. uh, it could be directed towards if it falls under your area or not. But when we have um, developers that specifically want to invest in a, let's just say, like maybe a, an older hotel and convert it into uh, apartments for lower income or start from scratch and want okay. to do lower income housing, what products would you recommend or do you guys have available for that specific scenario? Absolutely. So great, great question. And one that uh, doesn't really fall under the single family housing umbrella, uh, but it does fall under our, our housing umbrella a, a, as a whole. So uh, it, it kind of, if you go back to uh, state directors opening comments, you know, we administer about 40, 45 different programs. Um, so we didn't hit them all. We just kind of hit the, the highlights. But to, to answer your question, we, we do offer what we call a 538 program, which is a guaranteed multifamily housing program. Um, we have had a lot of success uh, in North Texas uh, utilizing that program. And I can think of maybe six or seven different projects uh, that I was involved in uh, over the last five years. Um, so that would be the target. They start with a, a lender uh, that would loan the money. Uh, then the lender comes to us uh, for that guarantee. But uh, we've, we've done them from, see the project in uh, Van Alstine, I think is about 40 uh, units. Uh, White Wright's about 40 units uh, on up to uh, one over in the, the Royce City Fate area that's about 240 units. Uh, so that, that would be our product, Guaranteed 538 program. Uh, okay, and then uh, thank you. And a follow-up to that would be specifically for single-family housing. If yes, sir. This, if they wanted to do the same, uh, same type. So let's just say uh, instead of doing it as uh, multiple units, we're just looking, you know, they're looking to do investments on a single-family home basis. Could Would... would uh, that same program apply or would you recommend something different? For it, it, it would not apply. Uh, so, so we don't have any program that would help a developer. Uh, let, let me back up a little bit. A for-profit developer uh, develop lots or, uh, you know, build spec homes. We do have a, a program called a site development uh, loan program uh, that if there was a community-based organization uh, that, that wanted to go into a community to develop uh, some lots geared at low and very low income individuals, we could uh, potentially uh, provide funds uh, for that development. Again, it has to be a community-based organization. When we talk about community-based, we are really talking about something that is controlled by the local community, meaning you know, the pastor uh, is on the board of directors and the superintendent's on the board of directors and, the, you know, 
uh, other community leaders or on the board of directors. Uh, it is truly controlled by that community. Uh, and they say, hey, we want this in our community. Uh, we do put a deed restriction on that uh, subdivision that it has to be uh, uh, in any home sold uh, has to be for low or very low income individuals. Uh, Outstanding. Thank you very much for that uh, information. Yes, sir. And that's not a very big program. Uh, we, we did six nationwide using that site development program uh, this last year. So not, not a very big program, but, but certainly one we could utilize. What's the name of that program? Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, say, uh, I think it's a 514 site development loan program. The number is probably not the important uh, part, but it's a site, site development uh, loan program. What other questions? Well, we're looking for, uh, we have a, a community that has. I'm try to share my screen here. I heard a couple of the presenters talk about uh, eligible areas and uh, online, uh, hopefully y'all can see a gray map. Can y'all see that? Yes. Okay. So uh, again, you heard pretty much everyone talk about uh, different eligible areas. And, and, and I happen to be on our eligible area map for, for single family housing programs. And you can see across the top, it, it lists different programs. But it, as we zoom into uh, North Texas, where are you at, Pam? What lo what's your location? Oops, she went on mute. All right, so I'm gonna go here north of McKinney where I'm at. So if you see the gray area here, that'd be our eligible areas for single family housing. But if you get north into Sherman, Denison, you see where it uh, turns a little bit uh, orange there. Those areas would not be eligible for our, our housing programs. Yeah, um, it's got a feature on there where you could actually type in a property address and you know it'll spit out a, an answer. Uh, Type here. So you'll see there. Uh oh, we can't find it. That's my childhood home there. But it couldn't find that one. But anyway, it would come up in uh, in, in in Dallas and and tell us that. Uh, you know, any, any community or any, you know, home there was, was not uh, located in an eligible area. So we could get specific on our, our eligible area map by, by property. So, and this would apply to both our 504 repair program as well as uh, our, our 502 direct loan program. And then we talked a little bit about multifamily housing. It would apply to that program too. Other questions? You know, I mentioned a little bit earlier about, uh, you know, if you ever hear me talk, you'll hear me talk about the 504 program, and that's our repair loan and grant program. And, and I mentioned that because as a federal agency, we wanna spend every dollar that uh, Congress gives us in our grant program historically we do not spend uh, all the funds that uh, we're allocated nationwide. Uh, so that's uh, uh, not, a, not a good thing. And it's definitely not because there's not the need out there. It, uh, in, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's because a lot of people don't know about the program. So I always try to talk about it, push it. Uh, you know, if you're in a small community, you go to church with somebody, you're involved in an organization with somebody that, uh, could potentially utilize uh, that grant program for repairs. So uh, Texas leads the nation uh, in that program every year, uh, and uh, but we could still uh, use some help getting the word out to, to do 
one more than we did last year uh, or a hundred more. Uh, we, we probably could have funded another uh, million dollars worth had we had the eligible applicants uh, for it. Uh, and at $10,000 a grant, you know, that's another hundred people that we're assisting uh, with uh, necessary repairs to their homes. Alan, do you have a flyer that you can attach to the that you can send to us that we can that we can provide that as when I'm traveling in my communities, that would be really helpful to have. Yep, yes, ma'am. Um, and, and what I'll do is I will get those to uh, uh, Jen to and Chris. Uh, Rick. Yeah. And I don't know how they're going. They're, I believe they're going to send out uh, that presentation uh, to everybody or provide. Uh, some type of uh you know up in the cloud link to it uh but uh, i'll i'll provide that uh, that would be on, great on thank you 504 and, and 502 programs thank you the programs that you're talking about with the um affordable housing is that something i know that i know you said it had to be a community situation or a non a not-for-profit company uh -huh. who is building that. We hear requests for affordable workplace housing all the time when we are out and about around the state, um, me and my four counterparts. So is this something that they could participate in or at least share this information? And what are the deadlines that are coming up or um, what, what do we need to do to get the word out yeah. on those? Right, great, great question, and and let me make sure, uh, let me clarify a little bit. So, uh, the to be eligible for our housing preservation grant program needs to be a, a nonprofit. If we're talking about just general affordable uh, housing, workforce housing, um, policeman, fireman, teacher, uh, construction worker, Walmart worker, what, however we want to uh, to break that down. And they would be interested in our our 502 loan program. All they need to do is apply. Uh, no different than going down to the bank and, and turning in an application. Uh, and, and that direct loan application, we can email it out. They can apply online. They can bring it in. However, we get that out. But uh, Janie, I'll have you a flyer on that program. Uh, and, and literally, they just need to contact our local office. No okay. different than going to a bank or a mortgage company. We just happen to sit at Rural Development as that banker mortgage company. Okay. I think the challenge that is inventory. Um, uh, there's, so, there's no doubt. So that, I mean, I guess they could use that, there's utilize no that for building possibly. Oh, absolutely. If yes. There's a development that, okay. Alrighty. We, Thank uh, you. And, and Janie, we, we do a lot of homes with DR Horton and uh, Beezer Homes and all, all the big home builders. Uh, we utilize that program too. So, um, but if you get out in, uh, you know, I, I live in the metropolis of Trenton, Texas, we don't have a DR Horton, mm -hmm. um, but it could be used for, you know, any local builder or purchase an existing home. Okay. Uh, either one. Uh, absolutely. So. Great. Thank you. Hey, Alan, I had a curiosity question. Um, okay. since you just mentioned like DR Horton, Beezer Homes. So these are, um, obviously big names in, in our DFW market and obviously over the last couple of years, you know, through the pandemic and, you know, the uh, how housing prices have just shot through the roof, people working remotely. We've got a lot of people moving into the region. I think COG has done a study that by 2040, we're at projecting 12 and a half million, you know, uh, residents within our Metroplex. So my question to you is, do you, when you work with like DR Horton and, and some of those bigger names, what is the accountability on the back end that they don't raise the prices um, or they <laughs> specifically, you know, make sure that, you know, that they adhere to the criteria that you lend to them? Um, uh, so, so we're lending to the end user um, and, you know, accountability, I, I tell you what, I, I, I think this is fair to say without stepping on anyone's toes, you know, the last three or four years, uh, we just saw a vertical increase in, in the cost of housing uh, to the point uh, that if you went into uh, 
uh, one of the large builders on a Friday and inquired about a price of a home. If you didn't put it under contract on Friday, uh, the next week that home price went up arbitrarily. Um, and it was just the, uh, the market. Um, you know, what we've seen recently is that that market has flatlined and it, uh, and even seeing some, some slight decreases in, uh, some of the cost of, of new construction and uh, so uh, you know as far as accountability um i don't i don't know that we've had any issues uh there i i do know we haven't seen uh an increase in cost because it's our client uh where uh where all the track home builders uh, uh you know in in allen's personal opinion to play fair and I'll tell all of them this too. So I'm not afraid to tell you all uh, is if you don't use their bank or their mortgage company, they're not providing some incentives that they would uh, if you were using their, their mortgage company. So uh, that does in turn cost uh, the client a little bit more out of pocket expense uh, to use what, what the, large builders term an outside lender. Uh, there's, there's honestly, I don't think anything anybody can do about it unless somebody wants to take that on from a, a legal perspective. Uh, but uh, from, from our standpoint, that's, that's about our only accountability gripe is, uh, you know, here we're allowing you to sell a, a home that you normally wouldn't sell because you're dealing with a different type of client. Uh, and yet you're not providing that same incentive uh, uh, that you would if they were going through your bank or mortgage company. So didn't really directly answer that question, but, but hopefully that helped a little bit. It did. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything we can do within within your community to to, to help you, uh, um, you know, get the word out. We're we're certainly willing to do. Uh, uh, if you if you have a, uh, you know, Janie and I have known each other for for years and done these real similar presentations together. Uh, I'm speaking for her, but uh, you know, if we can get in your community. Uh, to do something else. There's Molly jumping in. Uh, we've done the same thing up with the Texoma Council of Governments and would certainly love to come into to your community. And, uh, you know, we may not be able to assemble the same, same panel here, but we can certainly talk to the same programs more on a, on a local basis and would certainly love to do that. And, uh, you know, what I, you know, like to stress is tell us what the goals of your community are and, uh, tell us what uh, the challenges you're having and let us help you kind of chip away at them. Uh, one of my uh, kind of favorite examples that I've, I've given over the years, uh, uh, in, in, again, I live in, in Trenton and, uh, you know, one of the concerns that was brought up one day was about uh, uh, trash cans at the city park and, you know, they, they were trying to get some trash cans and just a few weeks before that, I had thrown away a, a flyer on Coca-Cola doing trash cans uh, for city parks, you know. So some of it's just awareness, uh, you know, for our staff uh, of what your community needs. So we can, you know, hopefully kind of back into it and, and help you if we see something that comes across uh, our desk, whether it be our program or somebody else's program uh, that we can uh, help you with. Uh, just just this morning, I passed on a SBA disaster assistance program uh, uh, to an individual that I wasn't able to help, uh, but hopefully SBA will be able to help them. So, you know, please let us know what, what your community needs uh, and what that laundry list looks like. And we'll certainly try to, uh, to help you with that.
Other questions, thoughts? Molly, what I leave out? You've heard this more than once. How are you? You're on mute. Molly, you're on mute. Thank you. There you go. How are you? <laughs> the city that you and I had worked on together has unfortunately decided that they are not interested in moving forward because they're satisfied with where they are. So there's not a lot I can do about that, but we are in the process now of doing a disaster mitigation plan for businesses. And, you know, one of the pieces of that is to make sure that there's housing available for workers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that's something that we're going to start working on a little more than we have also. Okay. And I might be in touch with you on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who we just got done. That, um, I'm sorry, Alan, who was the person in your office that's responsible for the housing and maybe the public buildings also? Uh, well, uh, the, the area director who, who took my place is Yolanda Collins, which I think you, okay, so uh, okay. she, she would be the initial point of contact, uh, for, for North Texas now. Okay. Good. And I'll Thank certainly you. help however I can, you know, if nothing else, just to redirect efforts if, if, if need be. Would you be willing to come speak to one of Always. my city series? City series presentations always about the funding y'all have. Absolutely. Okay. Be happy. People are people are the most interested, and we get the biggest turnout for anything to do with funding. Mm -hmm. And it's really for elected officials and city staff. Yep, we can do it. I think it's been about three years since we done those two of them thanks to uh, the pandemic but uh yeah yeah we're still doing them we were doing them online but um i mean what we're working on now is making sure that people know where they can where they can get infrastructure money because of the growth in this region mm -hmm. I'm working with EDA to, to make sure that, you know, when Globotech comes in, they're going to have what they need. So the city of Sherman is going to apply. Okay. And their money is, or their application is going to be for water, water sewer. And y'all also okay. do infrastructure as well, right? Right. That would fall under what my, Mike Canales' uh, okay. uh, presentation on our water and environmental programs. Okay. That's all I have, other than I need to come by and see you. <laughs> yeah, well, good talking with you. You too. It's been a while. Janet, I haven't been keeping up with the time. I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, we actually have a little time left. They, okay. uh, Pritt has not sent the two-minute warning yet, so we're still okay. good on time. Okay, so let's let's change gears a little bit from our, our, our 502 and 504 program and talk a little bit about housing uh, preservation grants. Uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, for a community is, is really one of my, my favorite programs, uh, uh, despite the fact it uh, gives me a little grief to administer on the backside after we we make the grant, but that's uh, that's okay. Uh, as far as for the community, great program. Uh, a little more in depth on it uh, uh, than we've got, and, and and Janie, I'll include a flyer on that one too uh, uh, to everybody. But uh, you know, again, uh, we're we're doing a a bulk grant to an entity who in turn can use it uh, within their community to uh, to regrant that based on the criteria that they establish. Uh, uh, again, as I mentioned uh, earlier, 
average uh, grant around two hundred fifty thousand dollars that we we did here in Texas this year, ranging from thirty five thousand to five hundred thousand. Uh, so we we got up up there pretty good with uh, with one of them. We funded one hundred percent of eligible. Uh, entities that applied this year and that's three years running that, that I know of uh, that we've we've funded uh, everybody uh, that, that had applied that was eligible. Uh, we did have a few that uh, decided they only wanted to submit uh, one or two pages in an application so we just didn't have a complete application uh, to review. Obviously didn't get selected. Um, the uh, the Notice of solicitation of applications for that program typically comes out around May with applications due in June. Uh, then we'll make our uh, selections in July uh, and awards typically uh, in, in September. It's kind of the, the timeline. This is a, actually a great time to start prepping uh, for that program uh, to be ready for, for next year. Uh, again, uh, an entity can use some of those funds for administrative cost uh, up, up to 20% uh, can be used for administrative cost. If you ask for more than 20% administrative funds, uh, you, your application will be denied. So uh, make sure you stay under that 20%. Um, the program hasn't changed a whole lot over the last uh, four or five years. So you can actually use this year's NOSA as a pretty good indicator of what next year is going to look like. And uh, since we just rewrote the regulation, I don't anticipate a whole lot of changes uh, between now and, and next year. Uh, but again, funds, you can use the funds, you regrant them in within your community. Uh, you set the parameters, whether you're going to deal with low or very low uh, income individuals or a combination of the two uh, to do health and uh, uh, safety repairs. And then in that program, they can actually, you can set it up to where they could do some cosmetic repairs too, uh, should you need, need to. The only thing it can't be used for is to tear down, rebuild. Uh, so it would it'd have to be a, you know, a uh, repair program. It's best if uh, an entity can match it because uh, you're going to get some priority points uh, yeah, if you if you match it with uh, other funds. Uh, most of our applications have been matched with weatherization money, uh, so uh, they in turn, you know, will do some uh, maybe some accessibility issues as well as uh, weatherization improvements. Uh, other uh, applications have been matched with. Uh, some different state money that may be out there or even some uh, that come from the power companies uh, and then a few uh, with just some in-house money that uh, that they may have access to uh, from from other uh, purposes. Um, have a Habitat for Humanity chapter. We've uh, been real successful uh, uh, partnering uh, with those uh, organizations uh, in uh, then instead of doing new build with that money, they are they're using it for uh, uh, rehabilitation uh, money within their community, still under the habitat umbrella. So, Alan, we just yes. received we just received the two minute. Okay, uh, I saw that session. Oh, okay. I was just making sure. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you, Janet. You're welcome. Hey, Alan, quick question on that. Yes. On the um the. Housing preservation, preservation the, pr the uh -huh. preservation grant. Does that does that have to be a community within a certain size or? Um, the eligible areas are the same as for our uh, um, 502 program. So, okay. uh, you know, the large one we did this year was for an organization that was actually based out of Houston. Uh, okay. and, and they uh, got a lot of applications from Harvey that were in areas they couldn't serve uh, and, and didn't have money uh, from their, some CDBG money they were getting uh, to serve uh, within Harris County. 
and they were getting a lot of Brazoria County and Galveston County applications. So they're actually using our housing preservation grant program uh, to expand into an area that's new for them. Uh, but okay. their home base is in, in Houston. So, but again, those funds are used in an eligible area for our program. Good question though. Thank you. We are probably going to get the, the 30 second countdown here pretty quick. So if you've got one more, we'll certainly take it. Otherwise, I appreciate uh, y'all joining me today. And uh, if we can do anything for you, your community, uh, be happy to talk about other programs too or, or connect the dots for you and get you in touch with the, the right people. So I appreciate everybody's attendance today and hopefully we gave you something else uh, for your toolbox to use out there in your community. Yeah, we're on the countdown now. Yeah, I see it, so. Oh, okay. Popped up for me too, so. Thanks so much for all the information. All right. yeah. Absolutely, thank y'all. Well, I can actually stop recording now, Alan. You can stop it. We'll go back to the main session. So thank you, Janet. Got it. You're welcome.